Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Spurs Up. It's the last episode of the semester, so we've got the myriad of sports coming at you as the season and semester comes to an end. I've had a lot of turkey over this last Thanksgiving break. Got a lot of finals coming up as well, but I've been doing my studying. I hope that the rest of the campus has been doing the same as well. Let's get right into the, uh, what we have for today. So. so starting out, we got women's volleyball. They finished regular season 19 and 11, and now it's their second consecutive postseason appearance, and it's Coach Tom Mendoza's uh, first two years, he's made it twice, so that's a pretty good record. That's very commendable. They actually won their match on senior night last Friday against Arkansas, 3-0. to zero. Something to be said for that. Um, they play Colorado State tonight, and they're currently 29-1 and one overall of their record. I think that's something that's commendable. This is a good season for the volleyball team, and so hopefully they can, they can finish out strong and, you know, have a, have a good uh, rest of the postseason. So uh, moving on to win so women's soccer. What, I mean, what can we say about them? They're just such a class act. 19 and two and three, lost in overtime, unfortunately, last week to Washington State. Um, they lost one to zero. That's the first. That's the first goal they've given up in eight matches, and that was an Elite Eight game. I mean, you really hate to see such things like that, um, but they have things to hang their head on. I wouldn't, wouldn't you say so? Yeah, like we talked about it all year, that they were trying to you know, translate into success in the postseason. They had not been able to achieve that. Right. And so when you have it, and you have another year where you make it to the Elite Eight, you're going on a run, like you said, you hadn't let up a goal in eight matches, and then you don't get that success in the, that round, it is gonna kind of bite you a little bit, but they can tell that they're building momentum up for the next couple seasons, and hopefully that will translate into success in the postseason. And you got Grace Fisk and Michaela Krzyzewski named as U.S. Coaches Women's All-Americans for this season. Um, that's something to be that's something to be commended, and I think that's that's not to be ignored. So I, I'm 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 optimistic for the next couple of seasons um, going forward. Great coaching program, great group of great group of uh, of players, and I think they're going to have good success in the next coming years. Definitely. So men's basketball, they are six and three. They're on a little bit of a hot streak, two game winning streak. They beat UMass 84 to 80 on Tuesday. And now they have Keyshawn Bryant back, which is huge. Really, really huge, Jack. That's that's a great asset to the offense. He's also a great defensive stopper. Um, and then you I can't forget about AJ Lawson, the constant for the team. He continues to just get buckets. He's playing very well. And so I'm I'm interested to see what that backcourt does for the rest of this season and depending on how their how the draft stock may play out as the season progresses maybe the next couple of seasons here at, at, at the at the university so um what but what are your thoughts on post presence i mean why do you how do you feel about the team that's 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 been a woe this season that's been a, a a struggle for the last couple of seasons i would even say do you feel like we're on a we're on a turning point do you feel like it's going to be more of the same I think you began, you began to see it a little bit over the tournament that we, they just played in. Um, as you know, like you said, post presence has been an issue, and that's something that Coach Martin has tried to drill into the team. And I think you're starting to see the ripples of that effect. Mike Kotsar was named All Cancun Challenge Team, and he keeps improving, and that might translate into better post presence and better handling when he is in the in the paint. Well, Frank seems Frank Martin seems very confident. Um, he says this is one of the deepest rosters he's had, which means he's I mean he's getting a lot of rotation. I'm seeing a lot of freshmen play Trey. Hannibal. Um, I've mentioned his name. I mentioned his name in uh, several other shows. He's a very, very, very athletic player. Um, if he gets, if he gets a better fundamental foundation, I think that he's going to be someone that Frank can rely on off the bench, providing great minutes. Um, moving on to women's basketball, they're currently eight and one right now. They lost by 14 to Indiana last week, but they did beat number two Baylor. Um, Taya Cooper actually transferred to Baylor, um, but they beat them by 15 to wrap up the tournament, and they won the Paradise Jam. Um, at, and they're going to be playing at Temple tomorrow at three. So how do you feel about them going into the, the, this Temple game? Do you think they have do you think they have a, a, a championship caliber team like we did when we, when we made our championship runs in the past? Is there, is there, is there things that, that needed to be added? Um, what, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? I think it all comes down to Don Staley, you know, making sure she can find the perfect rotation and the perfect lineup. I think when she figures out, and I think she's still doing a good job at it already, she's got to get to that point. Once she figures out how each of these players can complement each other and that lineup that can get the best amount of minutes for her best players, I think that's when you really see the success really start to take off. I think they're going to build off that momentum from the number two win against Baylor. I think they'll brush off Indiana. That won't be in the back. That'll be in the back of their minds. What's interesting about this Temple game, however, is that uh, Don Staley, it, she started her coaching career at uh, Temple. So that's going to be interesting to see how she goes up against, you know, her, her starting team. You always want to put on your, you always, well, you always want to put on your best performance when you go home. So I think it's going to be a very good game, exciting matchup. Um, Don's going to bring her A game and as well as the rest, rest of the team. 
So only we can we can only go eight to see, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a great game. I mean they're ranked six right now, so I mean that's a good place to start. Obviously at the beginning of the season they really have only way, only place they can go is up. I mean they can't go down too, but knowing Don Staley in this team, I don't think they highly are. unlikely. And Aaliyah Boston was named SEC Fresh Run of the Week for the third time. So accolades all around for Gamecock Women Athletics. Moving on finally to football. We have to talk about it. Uh, the season did come to an end last week, and they ended the regular season at four and eight. One of Muschamp's, Muschamp's worst record since he came to South Carolina. Well, if Tom could cue up anything right now, I would want him to cue up the violin, the smallest, most sad violin that we have. Unfortunately, we only averaged eight points per game over the last three. We were blown out, blown out by Clemson. I mean, it's, 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 at, at this point, there was only one move to make, and they did make the move. It was changing the coaching staff, specifically in the offensive, on the offensive side of the coaching staff. Um, how, what are you like? What do we? What do we do? What do we do? That's the. That, I mean, it's, it's obviously, it's whatever's whatever's been there is not working. So, what do you, Jack? We need Jack. We need that. We need Jack. That's what we need. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, if, I could, if the only thing that I could think of, honestly, is that now that they have, you know, these seniors that are leaving on the offense, you've got this new talent coming in, these recruits that we have. Holinsky's still sticking around regardless of what happens with his surgery. I think you just need a culture change on offense. This has been a team that has been very, very run heavy, very conservative, a lot of read options, a lot of out routes, a lot of screens. And I think that, and I always thought that it was the offensive coordinator, whether it was McClendon or Kurt Roper, that was the problem and being inconsistent with their plays and being very conservative with what they were doing. But as we've seen this year, I think it might translate a little bit to Muschamp. I know he's not going to be out this next season, but I think whoever they do hire out offensive coordinator as McClendon was uh, moved down to offense, uh, the quarterback coach, I think if they still don't work out well together, if we see these same problems coming in offense next year, I think the question must be asked, is it Muschamp's fault? Well, you have, there's a couple of factors that go into play there. For one... We all know if, if you paid any attention to Muschamp's um, career, he's a defensive minded coach. With that being the case, you need, you're going to need an offensive coordinator to, to, to offset you in a way to where you'll have the right checks and balances to understand what offenses are going to mesh and that while it's a defense wins championships kind of conference with the SEC, with the SEC there's still a need for a high-powered offense in this, in this era of football. You also have to consider another, a couple of other factors. Jake Bentley transferring is, is more and more of a reality every single day. Um, you also you're losing Edwards um, and you're losing Kinlaw. They're both graduating this year. Big losses, big additions to the offense. So the challenge is going to be how do we, one, recruiting, how do you recruit to, to fill those holes on the offensive end? Or do you have, do you have players that are, that are currently on the roster right now that are going to step into those roles and, and fill those shoes? Then you think, okay, what coaches am I going to have on, on the offensive side of the football that are going to complement them? Mm -hmm. So that's the real question here. There's been a couple of names been thrown around, but the most prominent name is Mike Bobo. He has been talked about as taking up that new offensive coordinator job, and I think it'll be interesting to see when they, what, what their timeline is for filling this position. I mean, they've got the offseason now, and especially the two biggest stories are going to be filling that offensive coordinator position and Holinsky's status as the offseason goes through, as he is having meniscus surgery coming up. And they, do have, they do have a lot of, there's a little time. Um, you have a year between now and the next season. However, spring ball comes right around the corner that's going to be that's going to be very important that's going to be a lot of a that's going to be a reconstructing period and i think you need to have your staffing in place before you can reconstruct mm -hmm. you have to have the right tools before you can build properly mm -hmm. and so i think that that's going to be a key Definitely. I mean, and like we said before, not even just recruiting to see who else you can get, but I think that recruiting to keep the players that we already have said are coming here, Luke Dottie and Marshawn Lloyd, players that haven't, you know, officially signed, but that are saying that they're going to come. you got to keep these players around because those are going to be big key parts of your offense and your team overall. So recruiting this offseason is going to be very, very huge and very telling for the next couple years of this program. Guys, this is a very... Very humbling moment for me um, in our show, and Spurs Up. This is Jack's last show, guys, and I'm, 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 I'm very humbled to have been standing alongside him for the last couple of seasons that we've been together. Um, it's been an honor, and I, and I, will, I will say that you have, you have been a constant here on this show for us. You've, you've given so much to the Spurs Up and the Capital City Sports team, and from me and on, the, on behalf of the rest of the team, we say, Jack, we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss doing this every week. 
And uh, for the last time, South Carolina, Spurs up.